Welcome, today we're going to look at the basics of shading in Maya. Shading is a process where we create materials and then assign it to a 3D object. The shading material will then define how the render engine is going to render the object. So a shading material mostly defines how the light interacts with the object and what is then going to be received by the camera. You can imagine we have like a light source and the light source hits an object and then it goes from the object it goes to the camera. But you also have reflections, so you have this object, so this red object is going to first hit the light beam, the, this mirror object, and then it's going to hit the camera. In shading there are three main different types of these reflections. So we have for one the diffuse reflection, where a light beam hits um, an object and then it's going to be scattered in every direction. And that's when we have like just base colors or something. And uh, a typical material for that would be like paper or clay or wood. So those would be all like diffuse materials. Then we would have something like a mirror or metal object that have a direct reflection. The light beam hits it and then is directly reflected. And lastly, we would have glass objects or uh, transparent objects where the light transmits through the glass. The pattern we see here is the pattern from behind and this up here is the floor. Yeah, because how the light interacts with the ball. Okay, now let's see how we can do this in Maya. So I prepared the scene with um, a basic lighting setup, a basic background and a shader ball. And now let's just open the render view. Now oh, this is my last render. Okay, and now let's just start rendering it. Now we don't really want to focus on the background because the background simply will not change. So we can use here in our render view this boxing and then just select the area we want to render and then the render is already a little faster. For the render ball a shading ball I'm going to just apply a new material and here I select in Arnold the AI standard surface and now let's look at how this is set up. The properties are a little mixed and you always have to check um, between the base, specular and transmission. So um, in this default mode we're going to see that we have a diffuse reflection and a spectral reflection. And that's simply because most objects have some sort of spectral reflection, maybe not with a weight of 1, maybe it's like just a 0 0.1. If you think about a polished desk for example, it does have a direct reflection component and it has a diffuse reflection component. Um, so you always try to find a mixture of these two properties for most shading. Of course we can now just remove the weight then it's completely diffuse reflection and now we would have kind of like a piece of paper and if we would not have it pure white we would also increase this to one. Now um, there's always this diffuse roughness component and this makes the surface more powdery so it just changes how much scattering happens on the surface level. Now if you want to create um, something like a specular, so a mirror-like object, there we would now just say good, we remove our base and we add our specular component. Yeah, now we can see um, the reflection, so now we see our HDR light map being reflected. Here we still have roughness turned on. So roughness defines how crisp the reflection is going to be. A high roughness, of course, is then going to be more similar to a diffuse reflection. And now you say, yeah, wait, but this doesn't really look like a mirror. Yeah, because a mirror actually also has a base component. The base color of a mirror is actually white and it is a metal object because it's like a silver mirror. So we can just put here metal to one and then we would have a mirror how you would expect it. So now we see the lines on the floor being reflected directly in this object. Now one thing that happens with reflective 
properties is that we are seeing here a self-reflection. This is basically the mirror in mirror effect. So this light beam is just bouncing up and down and the render engine has then a limit to this effect that you don't crash the computer in the end. So it's not an endless loop. You can change this limit. So we can go here to settings, go to ray depth and increase the specular ray depth. And there you can see, okay, here, if I increase it to two, then we have now two bounces and this is looking a little better. And if I increase it even higher, at some point, all of these black points are going to be um, eliminated because the render engine has now a much better overview of how it's supposed to be rendering. So that's just to keep in mind. So if you get weird results in your renders or something is not being reflected, then maybe you need to increase your ray depth. Now, lastly, we have a glass material. And a glass material is usually not metal. So we have to remove this again. Then we can access here the, the transmission property again. And you see also that a transparent object cannot be a diffuse object. So if I set this to one, it just disables the base component again. Now, what's important to note with glass objects is you have an index of refraction. So each material like water or glass or diamonds, they have a different refractive index. You have, may have to look that up on the internet. But um, you do not, um, you cannot set it here. It is in a specular attribute. So here we have the index of refraction. And the index of refraction defines of how um, much the light is being bent by the object. So here it's set to 1.5, that's usually glass. So we can put it to 2.5, that would be a diamond. And you're going to see in the render that now the, the lines and how um, the object is being rendered is going to be completely different. So down here in the, in the render view, you can just uh, click on the small camera, then you can have snapshots. And then here we now can compare. So this is now our glass, which rendered 1.5 index of refraction. And here's our diamond. Yeah, So we have a very stark difference the object looks. Okay, that's about it for the basic properties of any shader. Now you can create your own materials and usually materials are a combination of these two, these three components. Just play around with these, uh, these settings to see how it affects the object. The other thing that you can do is um, you can use the presets of Arnold. So here you just go to presets and there you have like good base components where you can just start working on your own shading that you need. So, um, so, wait, whoops. so here in the presets we like would have a glass. As, a, as one of the, the defaults, and then you can just start changing something like the color of the glass. Mm. Well, of course, you have um, a chrome object. Okay, I'll put a link to the scene um, in the description, and I hope you have fun experimenting with shaders. See you next time.